recording. I'm going to share my screen with you. Can you see my you can't you're not in I'm still launching. Somebody's here. Hello. Oh, Hi. Hello. Take your water with you. There, I muted you so I don't have to listen to it. All right, talk now. Hello. Too loud. Boom. Yeah, you're too loud. But I turned my point volume way down. I just muted you, so it doesn't make so much noise. You're just going to have to knock on the door or something when you want to talk. There. What? What do you want me to say? I think it's coming. I can hear you. Yeah. I, I don't know that you're coming. I don't know if you have your speaker on. Let me close the door. My speaker's on. They're just not as loud as you are. Can you hear me? Can you hear me loud and clear? All right. Let's see if anybody shows up. So I'm going to share my screen with you. You tell me what it looks like. Awesome. So we're a little bit early. We're going to start this meeting in a little while, but we thought we'd get things up and running so we can get some cases on there um, to share with people in case they show up. And if they don't show up, we're going to run the meeting for a little while anyway, and then we'll post the recording. So it'll be available on our website, and it'll also be available on our YouTube page. And we'll post the link to the Facebook page. And Dr. O is mute, so I can't really tell what he's saying. Try again. I'm going to invite a bunch of people right now. Did you get my, you got my invitation? Yes. Okay. So obviously we got our invitations going. Christy Goble has a question. No, she said that um, we have an extra dog. I see that.
All right. Is that you? Nobody's there. I'm inviting um, veterinary owners right now. Veterinary owners? Yep. Veterinary clinic owners. I invited holistic veterinarians only. For veterinarians by veterinarians. We don't ever have anybody in the same X pan. I know, but I'm gonna put them in different rooms. Oh. Uh, One's going under the stairs and the other's going in the classroom. Yeah. I'm gonna get started talking about tuxedo in a minute. First, I'm going to get the link. I might have to actually go to my email to get the link. All right, well, I'm going to get started talking about tuxedo so that we get the show going. So tuxedo was a 30-year-old uh, quarter horse paint, out, outcrop paint, who had been, um, who had had some respiratory, I think he maybe was only in his 20s, but he'd had some respiratory illness from the day that Jean McElvoe purchased him as a riding horse for herself. And I may have, I think I have a, um, I actually think I have a picture of him from when he was like first bought, which I didn't actually bring up, but I'm gonna see if I can find it. Give me a second. It's not on here. But when he was first bought, he was in 
pretty rough shape and he had COPD pretty bad. So she got him anyway as a horse for her kid, her grandkids to ride. And then we, and we'd been working on him for quite some time, just adjusting him and changing his diet and helping him with his COPD, which seemed to be helping her quite a lot. And um, one day she called and said, you know, Dr. O had just been there, had given him a ozone treatment. And that seemed to help him so much so that he left his stall instead of hanging around in his stall under the fans all day. He left his stall and he went out with his friend into the pasture. And when she found him later that day, about an hour later, um, he was standing among the trees but wouldn't move. And she coaxed him back up into the barn and his leg looked pretty bad. And she called her vet who took this x-ray. So this x-ray that you can see on the screen right now is Tuxedo's left hind foot. Maybe it's his right hind foot. I'll have to look. Um, we can probably read the x-ray and find that. Anyway, and as you can see, there's a pretty significant uh, subluxation dislocation. No actual fracture, but that vet at the time said, oh, this is bad. We are going to have to either do surgery or euthanize this horse. There's no way to get this back together. So um, what happened was she called me and said, I don't want to euthanize this horse. I am not ready for it. And I said, send me the films, and she did. And at the time, I happened to have an equine surgeon in the car with me. I was in South Carolina. We were driving around to do some calls. And that equine surgeon looked at the x-rays and said, yep, pretty much surgery or euthanized. And I said, I think we can fix this. So she sent Tuxedo to us, and he was in a Kimsey splint. So this was probably not quite a week later. Um, he showed up at our place and we took the splint off a day later and this is what it looked like so you can see that there's some swelling in here there's it was obviously wrapped you know so it was warm part of the year he was kind of wet so and he was a little bit due for a foot trim but not nothing or terrible um so just with her, you know, desire to help fix her horse, um, we said, yeah, I think we can help them. We're going to do what we can. So then, let me see if I can find her video. That is not the video. I'm going to go back over. Um, so this was the first bandage change that we did for him. And this was right after we took the Kimsey splint off. And we, we basically just, we adjusted the foot, we adjusted him, and um, removed the splint. Good. And there he was able to take a few steps and put some weight on it. Not great, but, you know, better than it could have been. We kept him for about two months. And... Hello. Yes. Am I on? Yes. Okay. So one thing that I want people to look at is in that first video, notice that we have a difference in caudal stride on the affected leg, not cranial stride. Right. So when we go back and watch that video, all right, so it's I'll a go. different video. Yeah, I got all kinds of videos. Here it is. So when we watch this, we know it's the affected leg. Good forward, bad caudal. Good forward, bad caudal. Good forward. Okay. So that does tell us it's bony and not soft tissue because soft tissue would be bad cranial 
good coddle. So. Good point, Dr. Awesome. So he got adjusted. We actually trimmed his feet, all four feet all the way around. And he got adjusted several times while he was here and improved over time. Um, we did not use any drugs on him at all. Uh, we, about, I want to say three and a half weeks after he got here, we took the bandages off and caught him posturing to urinate, which that we took as a pretty good sign because here he is using that limb just like he's supposed to use it. I think this is the video I want to share. We also were doing some chelation therapy with him at the time uh, because of his COPD. So this was definitely helping him. Um, so here he is out wandering around with another horse that we had at the time for the same reason. Let's, where's that video of him near the end of his stay with us? Let's see if I can get this up. Oh, this is another urination video. Lots of those. Those were good videos. Here he is. Let me make that bigger for you. completely on his own. It was a good day. It was a cool day. And he said, I'm ready to go home. So I'll play that again for you. He did that pretty completely on his own. All right. So let's go back and watch that again. Right at the beginning, even cranial and caudal stride phase. Then full weight bearing as he trots, which increases forces on the lower limb twofold. Yeah. So, so that's no longer a bony issue. No longer a bony issue, completely ready to go home. And so then he did. And it was all completely with, there was never any stall rest involved in that horse. Um, he was bandaged and hanging out and grazing and wandering around pretty much wherever he wanted to go for the entire time he was here. Um, and he was adjusted, Dr. O, what, like one, twice a week, three times a week at first? Uh, probably twice a week at the first, maybe, maybe three times. Um, but he was adjusted his atlas was adjusted a lot more than his leg because it took one person to adjust his atlas and two people to adjust his leg for a while. Yeah. So, uh, so we would adjust his atlas on a daily basis sometimes just to keep things in alignment. Remember, we're, we're treating an immunodeficiency along with a basically luxated leg. So that immunodeficiency comes into play too. If we're not treating it with, by increasing his um, neuroaxis, increasing the, the function of that atlas, then he's not going to be able to heal or hold the, the, the adjustment in the leg anyway. Because when that atlas is sitting not right, then we have weakness in the hind limbs in particular in these horses because of this positioning of the, ex, um, of the extensor tracks for the hind limb in the cord. So when we fix that continually and keep the nerve flow moving, then the hind leg can get stronger on its own. So then he went home and did really, really well for almost a year. And then one day, his owner, um, I think she was gone when um, they found him dead out in the, he was, he was dead out in the forest. He had been out with his friend and that was the end of his life. 
oddly enough, you know, he'd been doing really well. So what caused her, his death was probably like a heart attack, something like that. Definitely not a young horse. So uh, did you have any more comments about that, Dr. O? I think that's kind of the end of that case. Um, yeah, except for, you know, um, the total bill for vitamin chelation and chiropractic care. So we took care of two problems um, with that horse for about half of the cost that she was quoted for surgery. Well, um, yeah, she was. Hey, Genevieve, how are you? Hi, Genevieve. Hi. Glad you could make it. Anyway, all right. Can you hear us? I'm sure she can. Um, so anyway, we're yeah. uh, talking, ending up talking about a horse, um, name of Tux. But the amazing thing was that um, she had, the horse did great. And also when we look at things, I've talked to a lot of veterinarians about these kinds of cases. Um, and yes, our gross for that case was down, but our net for that case was pretty high. Well, because it was almost entirely adjustments. I mean, the, the overhead for that case, because we were treating the COPD with chelation, that was our basic overhead. And um, that probably ran about $3,000. But the, the chelation itself, you know, took place over almost a month and so that owner you know spread out the cost treatment for the copd was probably higher than actual treatment for the leg and if i go back and look at those records uh she probably paid oh maybe four thousand dollars to get the leg fixed versus she was quoted on almost twenty thousand dollars for surgery on that leg so, all right, let's go on to the next one, Charlie. Genevieve, are you there? I just unmuted you so you could talk if you want. No, she's being shy today, but that's okay. We're glad you could make it. Glad you can make it. We can, I can mute you again if you would like, if you got something going on. All right, so our next case was named by the owners, Charlie Puth. He came to us through the Boston, American Boston Terrier Rescue. And um, do, 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 I'm listening to a picture there. So this was the day that they picked Charlie up from the pound. Charlie had been found by a police officer in the road. So he had, um, been hit by a car, obviously, and the, oh, sorry, I'm boring myself. The SPCA called him, called the American Boston Terrier Rescue and said, we've got this dog. So this was the day that they picked him up and they didn't know anything about him except that he'd been hit by a car. So he got to our place. No, no, they took him to the vet first because they x-rayed him. No, he had been x-rayed at the um at right. the pound yep you're right and let me go find him again because i can only for one reason or other i can only show you one video at a time so when he got here he was pretty pathetic looking and he kind of he he, but he had all his skin. That was kind of the interesting part. So this is a picture of him. Oh, like on or about the day he came here. He had some, this was a few days after he got here. He had some corneal lacerations. You can see that his hair was starting to fall off. That was probably two or three days later. Um, so the hair started to fall off and eventually this area over his shoulder opened up and um, became a, a, a wound. So as those wounds surfaced, he got you know, worse and worse looking. And at one point uh, we had to, this is a picture of 
I, we had to put a little cape on him just so that we could one, keep him warm enough and two, sort of keep the wounds um, from getting flies. And I ended up having to put a, a collar on him so that he couldn't be licking his wounds all the time because that was the other thing he was doing was licking a lot of his wounds constantly. Um, here's a good photo image of his eyeballs. So you can see what damage he had up here and these his corneas were lacerated pretty severely. Part of that, that we see that pretty often in these Boston Terriers, the these smash nose, smash face dogs, because their eyes are so close to their their front of their nose that when they get hit by cars, excuse me. That seems to be like just part of the thing for him. We weren't sure he was going to have any vision at all. Um, it was kind of interesting. This might be it. No, that's not it. Where is it? We put a video out on Facebook. There, this is it. Here's Charlie. Hey, buddy. Hey, little guitar man. Uh, I don't want to play. Anyway, we put this video. And are video. you ready to eat? You want a little bite? And there he goes. A little snack. Good boy. So he looked pretty rough. And so word, of, word to the wise, don't put videos like this on Facebook. Boy, <laughs> my eyes are a little cloudy and all puffy. Yes, they are. You want some more? How about some water? You ready for water? We'll give it a minute to run. But basically, this video had over 30,000 views. Not all of them were really positive responses. But because we don't treat with any drugs, um, you know, we I talked about in this video how we treated with collar is keeping him homeopathy and with cold laser and with chiropractic care. But this dog had, let me see if I can find his x-rays. They may not be in here. Hi there. So this dog actually came with x-rays. I don't think I have them in his file, but he had a fracture at P13. So he was totally fractured and that's Part, but at, he had, obviously had a ton of um, trauma to go along with that. He stayed here for nearly three months. And it, during the course of that time, got adjusted almost every day, mostly his atlas, um, to bring that. A lot of students adjusting him, too. Yeah, we would, we would you know, we had several... Student groups come through. Where are you going, buddy? So he oh, got to boy. where he could kind of carry himself oh, around like this. Oh, this boy. was probably four or five weeks into his treatment, maybe a little more than that. Um, his vision was getting better. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, one of the things that we were really surprised was how well his eyes actually healed. I, mean, I don't know if I have a close-up image of him. Here we go. <coughs> Everybody, this is Charlie Puth, the Boston Terrier, also sometimes known as Guitarman. His eyes have healed immensely, way better than we thought they would. And we know he's got some, because he will follow my hand around. Um, we don't, we doesn't have vision because he does kind of walk into things sometimes, but he can navigate his way through the house and not run into furniture, stuff like that. Anyway, so you can see that that improved quite a bit. And eventually we got a cart for him. I'll find a video of a cart, of him in his cart. We've got better video later, but... Some of it is I don't have on this drive. Mm -hmm. 
It's here somewhere. I mean, there's lots of it, but some of it's just picking the better stuff. So here he is out in the yard and very interested in things. Um, I think this is a video where he's going to try to eat the whatever he found on the ground. It's probably where some dog peed or something because he's an intact male. So that's part of why. And you can see here where that wound had opened up. So when he came in, completely haired, looked like a normal body. And over time, the hair just fell off and the skin opened up and, and all those wounds just healed from the inside it out. Was actually, it wasn't actually that long over time. All the wounds opened up as soon as he got enough energy from to, to show us where the wounds were, which took him, you know, within the first three to five days, we were seeing most where most of the wounds were. Get that how extensive his soft tissue injuries were. Yeah, but this was several weeks after that. So it took a long time for those wounds to heal as well. We didn't shave any of them. That's just where the hair fell off. Um, but, you know, completely raw diet, uh, treated him with olive leaf and um, cold laser and adjusted him. And ozone. And ozone. We did ozone him. I think that's really and truly what saved his eyeballs because those eyes really improved a lot right after we started ozoning him. Um, and with ozone, so you might ask, how did we ozone him? What we basically did was put the turn the ozone machine on and, and drop the probe into his cage so that he was letting the ozone kind of filter in. Ozone's heavier than air, than room air, so you can just ozone over the top of the cage and it'll filter down on top of the dog. Um, it's not that it works topically, it's that he's breathing it in and then converting it to oxygen. So it that way acts primarily through the blood. Um, but I am also told that topically it helps like an antibi antibiotic. So on his eyes, because they're exposed and those corneas are permeable to oxygen like ours are, um, I'm sure having more oxygen in those corneas help them to recover. Do you want to add anything, Dr. O? No, I don't. I mean, I think that what we're trying to show here is with both of these cases is that chiropractic care can be an adjunct to any case. Um, and also can take, I mean, both of these cases were pretty much hopeless. Um, the owners uh, had opted for non-traditional care, um, or in the case of the horse had been told that non-traditional care was too expensive. And she was also given a, uh, an outcome of 10 to 20% um, survival rate on the surgery. Um, the, the dog was, you know, pretty much too expensive to consider, um, surgery, but at the time he came in, if we, if he would have gone, undergone back surgery with all the injuries that were involved that weren't visible, he would have never survived surgery. Well, I, uh, I don't, did you hear me? Is that me? Um, I don't think he had enough. Uh, reserve to have undergone surgery. He was pretty thin when he got here, which meant he was probably on the street for quite some time. But as he got better, it was pretty evident that he had been an owned dog. He had belonged to somebody because, you know, he had really good manners. He's housebroken, all those kinds of things. So, you know, for him, it was probably an unfortunate series of events that led to his getting hit by a car. So, um, yep. So anyway, so those are a couple cases that we've had, um, that we have pretty good documentation on because they came, um, to us with documentation, both of them. Um, and we have so many cases that are, are excellent. Um, just case after case after case where chiropractic, good food, and you know um helps these animals do great and so we're trying 
to to spread this to, to people. Um, let me read something that I read off of a Facebook post tonight, um, just because it it just was like, wow, I wonder about that. So well, let me well, I think part of what we're trying to get across too is that you know a lot of this information isn't available because people don't aren't there to get to see it and we certainly could put out here um, a little more substantial information here's how often we adjusted him here's what we adjusted all those kinds of things but you know unlike routine i don't know what you're calling it did you call it non-traditional care bill unlike other better yeah. care there is you know there's no blood work to show why we treated him the way we treated him it was pretty evident though in his pre presentation that his nutritional uh, plane was pretty pretty low he needed to gain weight and he needed to grow hair and he needed to be able to heal his wounds and he we basically treated him like a traumatic brain injury individual which is part of why we added the ozone because in tbis um, when the brain is injured other all the other organ systems aren't functioning like they should be either because they're dependent upon the brain and the spinal cord for substantial information to keep them moving like they should and reduce waste products so when we added the ozone that kind of helped really pick up his ability to process waste products and heal better along with the raw raw diet which decreased the his exposure to toxicities that we find in kibbled food but also helped to decrease his um, amount of waste products that he had to get rid of so he wasn't he didn't have such a high burden of energy being expended just getting rid of junk that he didn't need Yeah. your post here yeah let me read it to you so here's that it was about a skin disorder and i always get railed on when i talk about adjusting even though uh genevieve you support you stand up for me every once in a while um but I recommended um, a raw food diet. Uh, I said it's expensive, but most of the dogs that we have on it um, are off all their other meds when we use a commercially available raw food diet, not if they're making it by themselves. The next, very next post said, I'm treating a dog like this with high doses of OFAs, vitamin E and biotin, which is in a raw food diet. The dog is also on Duralactin pet, pet chews, um, it, Apoquel and Rimadale, blah, blah, blah. And I said, the first three things are in a raw food diet and may allow the animal to be off of the last three things. And the question was, do you recommend raw food if the owner is immunocompromised? And I was like, wow, okay, more kibble dog foods have salmonella recalls than barf. Um, and, and Barf's the very first, that's the only diet we recommend, but it's the oldest raw food company in the U.S. and has never had a recall. So, yeah, I would recommend it to immunocompromised people. I would be more likely to recommend that to an immunocompromised family than to, than a kibble. Good point there, because, you know, um, whether or not you've got an immunocompromised system or not, you know, those kibble diets can carry all kinds of stuff. And it's not just on the food itself. Sometimes it's actually the, um, it's actually the packaging because, hey, they're, um, they're kibble, so they must be safe because they're cooked at such a high temperature but sometimes the packaging itself is exposed to some of the raw materials that, are, that go into those and sometimes the raw materials are not the highest quality and the companies or people who work in the companies depend on 
that heating process to try to kill the bacteria. And what happens is then it gets transferred to the packaging itself. And that's how a lot of people get sick from those. Any other right. Well, and it, it just makes common sense. But the one thing I think that is if they're feeding a raw diet, they're more likely to use good hygiene for themselves where, I mean, the, the one uh, blue buffalo recall uh, was six people that got salmonella after they fed their dogs um, the blue buffalo. Well, um, none of the dogs got sick, just the people from failure to wash their hands after they fed their dog. And I think you're going to be more likely to wash your hands after you feed the dog if you're using a raw food diet. I know. I always do. Because the hands are usually sticky. So it's kind of a reminder. So Genevieve, do you have any questions? Are you with us? He's listening. Well, I think um, this has been a, a pretty good first meeting because we got to share a couple of different. Um, Why don't we end with, um, and I'm trying to find it. Pieces. What are you trying to find? Um, third time's a charm. Um, oh, I got it. I can pull it up. Okay. Oh, I just kicked myself off. No, I didn't. There we go. Yeah, let's end with that video. All right. So then there's the so the next one we're gonna share is from a dog whose name is Dewey. Let's see if I can find Dewey. You just went by it. A B C D. So Dewey was a lot of fun. Dewey hates Dr. O. So why don't we just play the movie? I'm it, looking for it. It's right there. Right there. What do you mean it's right there? Down at the bottom right. Yep, we can play that if it'll play. It wants to play it from YouTube. I could find it on YouTube probably. Mm -hmm. that's not that's not a um mp3 let me find it on youtube for you. because you're going to find out that i have this secret fetish with games on my youtube channel look at that Can you share with me? Can I share what with you? My screen. Mm, maybe. I can split my screen. Since we're getting interested here, I don't know how to share my screen. I can. I don't know that you can. I would have to split the screen at the beginning with you, and I'm not split screen. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. Can you see it? I see black. Right. There we go. That's not it. So this was Dewey when he came to us. This was actually his second paralyzation. And he had seen three other certified doctors. And there he was on his recheck right after that adjustment. And when the people between there, they cried and they wanted to know how come more doctors didn't know how to do this. 
And so he missed a few treatments and then became paralyzed again. And this is how he looked. And this is a dog who would bite Dr. O when he saw him. And he was so uh, obtunded, depressed, that he wouldn't even bite Dr. O. But you can see he was, you know, this is about the third day. He did stand up a little bit. Yeah, he was with us for exactly a week from probably, he, but he'd been paralyzed the third time. This third time, he'd probably been paralyzed 10 days total. Then he started. Day four. Trouble going up the stairs. But he did begin eating and drinking. We had to force feed him when he first got to us. And then, so then a week later, his owners came back to pick him up and he was pretty much back to his old self. The, oh my God, is you can't see, you get, don't get to hear it. You can't see the tears running down her face. But he's playing soccer one week after being totally paralyzed, being told that the only way to save him was $4,000 worth of back surgery that might have a 10% chance of recovery or put him to sleep. So, uh, so these chiropractic videos, works. So these videos, you can, um, you can find them, unshare your screen. So you can find these videos on my YouTube page. It's uh, Amy Hayek. So you just go to YouTube and um, ask for just my page. And there are more cases on there if you're interested or if you want something to be able to show people how it works, they're out there. And in the meantime, we're always posting new stuff on our Facebook page and in our, on our website. We are currently, we've currently got a couple good things going on. And one that we're preparing for for next year is a pre and post AVCA conference, conference at the ranch here in Meridian, Texas. So for those of you who are thinking about it, this is a good time to get uh, registered for that. So the pre-conference will begin Monday, the week before the week of the ABCA conference in November. Dr. O, do you have those dates? I do. The conference is uh, the 9th through the 11th. So the pre-conference will be the 6th, 7th, and eight, uh, 6, 7, and 8, Monday, okay, Tuesday, so, Wednesday. So that part of the con you can sign up for that part, and that'll be very scientific and educational. We plan to do um, uh, some uh, dissection on a horse and it'll be very chiropractically oriented um, we're gonna look for chiropractic symptoms and signs that lead us to find things that we find in the live animals and um, then post conference which will be from the 12th no, the 11th through the 13th. The 11th through the 13th. We'll also be back here at the ranch. You can do both of them. You can do one or the other. We've got space here at the ranch for people to stay with us if they'd like. Um, you can also find a video on my YouTube page that explains the ranch. We use it as a bed and breakfast. So there's a, a nice little tour there. But on that second part of that week, we will be doing a little more doctor discovery. 
So we're gonna talk a little bit more about promoting yourself as an animal chiropractor, um, changing your life vision, or at least pursuing it more wholeheartedly. We're gonna have some really good inspirational speakers here and some people who are gonna be um, pretty awesome in that kind of space. Thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you have a good night and we will the, see you later. We're gonna post this recording in a little while. I'll post it to our Facebook page so people can watch it if they would like. Uh, the, the next doctor's rounds will be two weeks from today. It'll be Monday night at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yes, Central Standard Time, and that date will be? December 4th, because Dr. Rounds will be the first and third Monday night of every month. Okay. And if you have a case that you are having trouble with and would like some help, um, send us an email, and we can help you. We can get it up and running. All right, thanks for joining us, and we will... Um, keep track with you, keep up with you in the future. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Right. Bye now. Bye.